Today we're going to do another best places to live video and we're going to be highlighting Fountain City in Knoxville, Tennessee and we're going to get started right Welcome back to All Things Tennessee with me, Ben Barreto, your local real estate pro and relocation expert for East Tennessee. Today, we're going to visit one of the best places to live in Knoxville, and that is Fountain City in North Knoxville, and uh, let's get started. Can you hear the rain outside? It's coming down pretty hard right now. So, Fountain City, it's a neighborhood in North Knoxville and falls under the zip codes 37918-37912. And as a teenager, I spent a lot of time running around this area. I went to high school right over the hill in Halls, uh, a future video on that area to come. But in the late 90s, and really even today, a lot of Halls is just mostly rural. And as a skateboarder, there wasn't many places to go. But Fountain City had plenty of areas to go grind and break some bones with my friends and get in trouble. So it was convenient. Fountain City is a great area to live with a long history connected to Knoxville's you know origination story and offers a convenient location as well as offering both suburban living and city amenities. So let's discuss the area in more depth starting with the history of the area. So Fort Adair, also known as Adair Station, was the first settlement in the area now known as Fountain City and it was built by Captain John Adair around 1791. Now the purpose was to protect the westward bound settlers from the Cherokee who were fighting against these invading settlers at the time, taking all their land. Now the community that developed around Fort Adair, originally called Grassy Valley, eventually became known as Fountain Head. In the mid 1820s, a circuit rider named E.F. Sevier, who was the grandson of John Sevier, who I spoke about in other videos you can probably watch on this channel, helped establish the Fountainhead Methodist Church, which is the predecessor of the present day Fountain City United Methodist Church. It was a meeting house which completed which was completed just north of the Adair holding in 1828. And within a few years, the Fountainhead Campground had developed on land adjacent to the meeting house, which was fed by a large spring. Now the campground was a popular place for religious revivals, uh, some of which hosted as many as 2,000 people at the time, until it was moved to the Inskip area, which was uh, closer to the railroad in the 1880s. Today, the old campground is home to Fountain City Park. And in 1893, Holbrook Normal College was established on the lands adjacent to Fountainhead Hotel. Knox County purchased the school, which had become, uh, which had come into the possession of the Tennessee Baptist Association. And in 1906, for the establishment of Central High School. In 1919, Hassie K. Gresham, a graduate of Holbrook, was named principal of Central High, making her the first female high school principal in the state of Tennessee. By the 1950s, Fountain City was home to over 30,000 residents. Knoxville, seeking to expand its tax base and form a metropolitan government, attempted to annex Fountain City in 1959. A male poll showed that Fountain Cityans opposed the annexation by 10 to 1 margin, and the community filed a lawsuit to block it. After Knoxville made a number of concessions, including a one-year moratorium on city taxes, the lawsuit was dropped, and on February 12, 1962, in a ceremony that actually included a mock funeral for what was deemed the death of Fountain City, the community's leaders handed over a symbolic sword to the mayor at the time, John Duncan, making Fountain City City, the official northernmost area of the city of Knoxville. All right, now you got your history lesson out of the way, let's talk about location. Now, Fountain City is located in the Appalachian Ridge and Valley region, which is characterized by long, narrow ridges that run northeast to uh, southwest, to, from northeast to a southwest direction. The community is hemmed in by uh, several uh, ridges, namely Black Oak Ridge, Beaver Ridge, and they, that divides Fountain City from Hall's Crossroads to the north and Sharps Ridge, which separates Fountain City from North Knoxville proper to the south. Along with Hall's adjacent communities include Powell, which is opposite Beaver Ridge to the west, Gibbs, which is northeast, uh, Beverly to the east, and Whittle Springs to the southeast. Fountain City is drained primarily by First Creek, which rises near the base of the Black Oak Ridge and proceeds southward through downtown Knoxville, where it empties into the Tennessee River. The main road in Fountain City is Broadway, a section of U.S. Highway 441 that connects Fountain City to Halls, 
where it then turns into Maynardville Highway. Interstate 640 passes along Fountain City's southern boundary and Interstate 75 passes through the western part of the community. Other important roads include Merchant's Drive, aka Cedar, which turns into Cedar Lane, which connects to Broadway, uh, which connects Broadway to I-75. I can't speak today. And then and then you have Tassel Pike, which connects Fountain City to the Gibbs or the Corrington community in the Northeast. Okay, being the honest agent, I'm going to give you some pros and cons in this video, but we're going to start with pros. Um, and the pros to living in Fountain City, of which there are many, but I'll keep it short. First off, the area is conveniently located next to the 640 bypass, which puts you within reach of just about every point of Knox County in about 10 minutes from downtown. Uh, to the, the West Knoxville area. You can also jump on Broadway and it's a straight shot to downtown uh, in 15 minutes and may, maybe 20 in high traffic and if you hit every red light on the way. Also, the Knoxville area transit public bus reaches this area so you don't have to use a car uh, if you don't want to. The area is affordable but also has some high, you know, some nicer neighborhoods as well as uh, right here in Fountain City, you'll find numerous grocery stores, restaurants, uh, and other services like gas stations. You'll find go uh, golf courses nearby, Whittle Spring Golf Course, several parks, a skateboard park, and a lot more than that. So leaving the area outside of commuting to work isn't necessary if you can use the bus. You also have Fountain City uh, Lake, commonly known as the Duck Pond, and remains one of Fountain City's most prominent features. And there's a really adorable historic uh, area right around that park. Great for those Instagram pictures that you need to get caught up on. There are a lot of parks in the Fountain City area and some of them include Fountain City Park located on the site of the old Fountainhead Campground which consists of about 12 acres situated along the small springs that feed into First Creek. And then you have Fountain City Ballpark built in 1954 and the Fountain City Arts Center. If you're a walker this is a great area to live because it's one of the few areas in Knoxville that has a decent amount of sidewalks that cover a decent amount amount of area. Before we jump into housing information and the downside of Fountain City, make sure to check out last week's video where I tell you why a bidding war might just hurt the sale of your home. You can watch that by clicking right here or you can follow the link in the description. Also while you're here, make sure to like and subscribe and if you are looking for a realtor because you're thinking of making a move to the Knoxville area, give me a call. Though there aren't many subdivision communities in Fountain City, you're still going to find a lot of communities and neighborhoods, apartment complexes, and historic homes. There's no set type of home you're going to find in this area, which is the case for a lot of East Tennessee, but with the lack of subdivisions, the variety of homes are plenty, even on the same block from ranchers to two stories and contemporary to historic and traditional. The houses in Fountain City run the gamut of styles, ages, and more. Now, you're not gonna find many, if at any at all, new construction homes in Fountain City. The area doesn't offer much in the way of land to build more homes. So you're gonna find many of the homes in the 37918 and 37912 zip code to be uh, uh, you know, older, to have some life on them. Some of them renovated uh, and some of them in need of love. The vast majority of them, though, fall in the middle, offering move-in ready conditions due to the care provided to them by the people that have lived in this area for years. Now, in this area of Fountain City, the average cost of home is about $317,000, with the median sales price at $281,000, and with an average sold price per square foot of $184. Now, the area has seen a 12.6% increase in value growth in the last 12 months. Now here's some fun demographic facts about the area. The population of Fountain City is about 8,000 people with about 2.34 thousand people per square mile. The median age is 39, making this a popular area for young first time home buyers with uh, most of the people falling between the ages of 35 and 54 years old. Uh, the male to female ratio if you're interested is 50-50 and the vast majority of people in this area have a high school diploma or higher. And 63.6% .6 of the people in this area identify as Republican. All right, so let's discuss the cons or the downsides of living in Fountain City. So again, the main road that runs through this area is Broadway, which after Kingston Pike in West Knoxville has a dense amount of services, uh, commercial services. So traffic in this area can be pretty thick and pretty high. Uh, Broadway is almost always busy until about sundown. Another downside to this area is you know the property taxes uh, and this is going to be the case for anywhere in the city 
but you're going to be paying in both county and city taxes. Now, however, the upside to that is uh, you're going to have more in the way of community services uh, that are included with those city taxes. Unlike in the county, in order to get those services, you have to pay for them out of pocket. Now, again, the homes in this area tend to be a little bit on the older side on average, as well as uh, the apartment complexes if you're looking for rentals. Due to his the historic place Fountain City has in the Knoxville market, it's been being built up for quite some time now. So if you have to have a new construction home, then you probably aren't going to find this area for you. Additionally, if you're looking for space from your neighbors, this area may not work. The houses aren't right up on top of each other, but the communities are thick and you're not going to find a lot of one acre properties in this area. As you can see, Found City offers an affordable place to live for first time home buyers or anyone in that budget on a budget and uh, people that want a sense of community and places to go nearby like small parks to hang with kids, walking trails or sidewalks to just enjoy a stroll are going to enjoy this area. Well that's it for today's video. I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, if you're interested in moving into this area, give me a shout. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye.